Good afternoon, radio audience, and again, as always, want to thank you so much for tuning in to the Unadulterated Truth Broadcast. Broadcast, that is a live Bible question answer program where you, the radio audience, at any point in time during this broadcast, have the opportunity to afford it to you to pick up your phones, dial the number 281-837-2222 if you have any Bible questions, comments you'd like to make, and we'll give you book, chapter, verse for all of your Bible questions, and love to listen to your comments as well. Exposing the false Hebrew groups, and you will understand more about what we mean as we go through this subject matter this afternoon. Paul writes to Timothy in verse 71, verse 3, he says, I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus when I went into Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some that teach, that they teach no other doctrine. Neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies, which minister questions, rather than godly edifying which is in faith, he said, so do. I'm going to read verse 5. Now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith unfeigned, from which some having swerved have turned aside unto vain jangling. Now I've read 1 Timothy chapter 1, 3 through verse number 6. 1 Timothy 1, 3 through 6. And again, we're going to expose false Hebrew groups. Uh, the numbers 281-837-2222. If you have any Bible questions or comments you'd like to make, and at this time, Javier is going to be coming to the mic, laying the foundation uh, on this afternoon's uh, subject. Brother Javier Frias. Amen. God bless you, Brother Henry. Thank you, my brother. Audience, I hope you're listening to this subject. Uh, for those of you who are being deceived, we pray that you listen to this. Concerning these Hebrew groups that are being uh, deceived and deceiving others, understand that the scriptures in the Old Testament, God called Abraham out from his family. He said, get away from your family. From there came Jacob. From there came the Hebrews, the Jews. They were in Egypt over 400 years. And then afterward, God call, called them out from Egypt unto the wilderness to go to the promised land that he promised them. Now understand that in the New Testament, it discusses where Paul, he went to the Gentiles. Now that word Gentile, they like to change the definition of that word to mean Jew. But the idea is that the word Gentile is defined as a non-Jew, a non-Hebrew. Now, when it comes to the different subjects we talked about in the past and faith, whether it be IUIC, Israel United in Christ, ISUPK, you got different Hebrew groups that are out there, uh, Hebrews that are out there that will try to deceive you that there's two different Christ, which is not two different Christ. Amen. Uh, when it comes to John the Baptist, his disciples, they went up to Jesus. They asked him, uh, are you the one that should come or should we look for another? Another. There's only one Jesus Christ. Amen, there is amen. no a multiplicity of Christ uh, that exists. So for those teaching that there's a multitude of Christ, I would like to see where it's written in the scriptures where there's another Jesus Christ. Now, audience in Luke chapter 2, looking at verse 4, we want to look at a a word here that's mentioned, Luke 2, 4, And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth unto Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. Now, what some Hebrew groups say is that the Latinos, the Indians, and the blacks are the Hebrews, which is contradictory to the scriptures. Amen. Some will say that only the blacks are the Hebrews, which is at the same time contradictory to the scriptures. That word lineage, audience, paternal descent is G3965, a group or families or a whole race, family kindred, family kindred. Now, as Brother Henry just read, don't give heed to genealogies. Don't give heed to genealogies. That same family that came out of Egypt, they were connected by bloodline, the Bible says that that is no longer in effect. Look at a scripture here in Nehemiah chapter 7. This is how Syria was in the Old Testament, where in the Old Testament, when they came from Babylonian captivity, what did Nehemiah do? What was he in charge of? He had to make sure that the bloodline was as it was when they left for 70 Amen. years, when they were captive in Babylon. Nehemiah chapter 7, looking at verse 5, the Bible says, 
and my God put into my heart to gather together the nobles and the rulers and the people that they might be reckoned by genealogy. And I found a register of the genealogy of them which came up at the first and found written therein. Now, my question is, and here's the thing. Is God talking to you today, you Hebrew groups? And here it says that he put it in his heart. And at the same time, where is your genealogy? Where is your record? Verse 6 says, These are the children of the province that went up out of the captivity of those that had been carried away whom Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had carried away and came again to Jerusalem and to Judah, everyone uh, unto his city. Look at verse 64. The Bible says, These sought their register among those that were reckoned by genealogy, but it was not found. The Bible says, Therefore were they as polluted put from the priesthood. And today we're called kings and priests. Uh, Romans chapter 2 talks about uh, those who have the spirit of God are spiritual Jews. A Jew that's inwardly. Why? Because he has the spirit of Christ. Now, when it comes to these men, they sought their registry. They sought their names among the register, but it was not found. Mm -hmm. My question today, do you have a register that is over 2,000, 3,000 years old to prove your genealogy? And, I want to say this, if you can prove the genealogy, which I doubt you have those records, and I doubt that you can, Paul already mentioned in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 4, to not give heed to genealogies, the tracing of families, lineage, race, descendant, paternal, from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So when it comes to what we just read, Old Testament, Brother Henry read the New Testament, that no longer is in effect. So all your huffing, your puffing Amen. that you're doing doctrinally is powerless. Spiritually powerless. God has no care. And I have no care at all for your speech. It's to me it's weak speech. It's it's false doctrine before God's eyesight, before the saints, and before the church. Christ is the head of the church. There is no head or leader on earth. It's Christ. There is no other head or other lead that is in rule. So when it comes to this subject, we pray that you be not deceived by these men, by these groups, because they will deceive you. But look at another scripture in Ephesians chapter 2. Looking at verse 13, But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Now he's talking to the Gentiles. Because in verse 11 he says, Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcised by that which is called the circumcised in the flesh made by hands. That's talking about the Jews. That at that time ye were without Christ being aliens from the common wealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise having no hope and without God in the world. Now this is someone like a Corinthian. Someone like an Ephesian, which mm -hmm. is he writing Ephesians too. Uh, someone like a Roman. Those are Gentiles. Now, when it comes to verse number 14, for he is our peace who had made both one and has broken down. Look what he did. Jesus broke down the wall, the middle wall of partition between us. We all know what a partition is between Jew and Gentile. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments, Containing ordinances for to making himself of twain one new man, so making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. So, what does this scripture teach, teach us? It teaches us that Christ is now accepting as his family those who are born again, John 3 3 through 5. In water grave baptism, they become spiritual Jews. Romans chapter 2. Doesn't matter what color your skin is. Doesn't matter where yeah. you're from. Take heed, audience, that you be not deceived by these men that deceive with this doctrine. Because they actually can take from you uh, what God has given you. I want to close mm -hmm. with this. I want to go to Song of Solomon. Chapter is chapter number 1. 
Because a lot of these Hebrew groups, they confuse this verse in verse 1 through 4. The Song of Solomon, which is Solomon, let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. Now his, last time I checked, his means a male, H-I-S. H-E-R is female. For thy love is better than wine because of the savor of thy ointments. Thy name is as ointment poured forth, therefore do the virgins love thee. Draw me, we will run after thee. The king hath brought me into his chambers. Now I believe the king is Solomon, and for him to bring you into the chambers, you can't be talking about your own self, as if he's bringing himself there. This is a song. He says, we will be glad and rejoice in thee. We will remember thy love more than wine, the upright love thee. He says, I am black but comely, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon. Now, it mentions that she is black, but Ephes uh, Song of Solomon, chapter 5, looking at verse 10, look what she is saying about him. It says, my beloved is white and ruddy, the chiefest among 10,000. He said, now that word ruddy is red. It's described as red. White and ruddy. That's the description. That's the same description that's described uh, concerning David. That's the same description that's described concerning Esau. And so these scriptures that we're reading, we're not just, we're not here just to call out their name and call them false teachers, false prophets, uh, because that's easy. I, we can do that all day. We can say it in person's name, call them false teachers. That's a piece of cake. But what we're doing is actually going through the scriptures and showing what makes them false. Amen. Amen. Because saying someone's false and saying their name is, is powerless unless you have the scriptures to back it up and prove it. Now I'm going to call us 21 22 22. I want to thank Javier for a wonderful explanation. And I think he was patient um, with his explanation of scripture. He's given book, chapter, and verse. Again, 281-837-2222 should have been the number you call if you could discredit uh, anything that this brother has just read from the scripture. You know, you know, guys like this guy call himself Elder Michael Johnson. You know, this guy who's supposed to be master Hebrewism, who's got his studies from schools such as University of Southern California, Arizona State, even got this King James Bible university that he set up. You know, the problem with these guys, and, and this is the problem with anybody who uh, puffs themselves up with knowledge, they miss, they miss the love that God came to bring for all mankind, you see? And so these guys like Michael Johnson, I'm a, and, and my name is Henry Stevenson, guys like him who claim to be so studious of the Bible, the problem with them is they are so, they are so much educated in secularism that they can't see spirituality. Amen. Now, I'm going to say something. Now, if Javier brought up Abraham. Now, and this is the Michael Johnson and all you who attend his school and read his literature. You bunch of racists is what you are. And I am black. And I'll tell you, you are racist. Amen. I believe you're racist in all. It could be racist in all ethnicities. And if you're black and you're against any other race, if that's not black, then you are racist. That's what you are. Amen. Even in our group. It ain't just KKK. We got black races as well. So I'm sure we get that. Amen. And so if you're teaching that that flesh and blood, people that are creating the image of God because of the color of their skin, that they can't be saved, I need Bible for that. Amen. I need Bible because the Bible tells me that when Jesus gave the instructions to the, I'm going to go back to Abraham in a minute, when Jesus gave instruction to the apostles before he stepped on a cloud and went to the heavens, he told them to go preach to every creature. Now, I want to know, I need your definition of what Jesus was talking about here in Mark 16. And he didn't say, and don't go to the Hispanics. And don't go to the Chinese. Because I'm going to read this, and I see this nowhere in the Bible. He said to them, go you into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believe and is baptized shall be saved, and he that believe it not shall be damned. And I'm just curious, Michael Johnson, and those who follow you, ISUPK, and even the guys like Shaka we dealt with, I need a Bible verse, rightly divided, that tells me that people like Javier Frias cannot be included in the salvation plan of God. Amen. See, the problem with you guys is you don't know who Jesus is. You have a different Jesus than the Jesus that we read about in the Bible. And this is how you concoct false doctrines such as you concoct. Now, let me do something with you. I want you to go back to Deuteronomy 26. Now, Deuteronomy chapter 26. Now, here's the question. 281-837-2222. I want to ask these guys who claims Abraham is their father of their faith. I want to ask them, was 
Abraham considered a Gentile or a Jew whenever God called him. So you need to do your homework. You're in this big school and you got a, a school that you run, King James Bible University, and you can't even tell us what Gentile means. And all you got to do is pull up a strong concordance and all it means is other nation. That's all it means, a other nation. And so what God did is he called Abraham, told him to get away from his fathers and from his people. Why? Because they were idol worshipers is what they were. God knew Abraham's heart. Now look with me in, in Deuteronomy 26 and verse 5. And you shall speak. Now this is what God is telling the children of Israel that he wanted them to say. And you shall speak and say before the Lord thy God, a Syrian, ready to perish, was my father. A Syrian. You know that's not a Jew. A Syrian. Ready to preach was my father, and he went down to Egypt, he sojourned there with a few, and became their nation, great, mighty, and popular. Now, I want to say this here real quick. I want to say this. Ab Abraham was a Jew. Abram was a Jew. And what God was doing through Abraham, Abram, he's telling him, Abram, I'm going to make out of you a nation. You're a Gentile, but out of your loins is going to come a nation. That's what he's telling him. And when I create that nation, which will be the Jews, I'm going to use that nation to bring the Gentile nation back to God. That's what he's doing. The, the plan of God was to take a Gentile, make a nation out of him. He did that, the children of Israel. And then he was going to use that nation, the Jews, to, to save both Jew and Gentiles. And so that was God's plan from the very foundation of the world. Not to just say one ethnicity, one flesh person based upon the color of their skin. Jesus said in John chapter 6 and 63, John chapter 6 and 63, John 6, 63, the Bible says there in that verse, he says, it is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. See, you know what I'm you guys propagate the flesh. You believe it's about the outer appearance. You think that people have to be a physical Jew, obey the, all the laws of Moses in order to be saved. Now, I'm going to leave it. Before I talk to Brother Ozan, I want to deal with one more thing. If you believe the Bible, I want you to go to Philippians chapter 3. Did, did Paul lose his mind? Because Paul tells us he was a Jew. Now, and he could validate what tribe he was from. You guys, like Michael Johnson, you guys, you guys are so unlearned. You, you guys are so all key. As Harvey has said, you couldn't even prove. You can go to Ancestry.com and, and take the blood test, and you still could not prove which of the 12 tribes you were from. You guys are so idiotic and so ignorant of the scriptures, it's really ridiculous. And, and by calling yourself master teachers, that, that's, it, it explains why. See, because you're trying to wear a name that you shouldn't even be wearing in the first place if you believe the Bible. Now, look at Paul here. Now, let's see what Paul felt about being a Jew and, and then converting to Christianity as a Jew who could prove that he was a Jew. Philippians chapter 3 and verse number 1. Now, open your Bibles, Hebrewisms, you Hebrewists, and read along with me and ask me, 281-837-2222, and just call in and just tell us where we're missing the mark. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord to write these same things to you. To me, indeed, it's not grievous, but for you it's saved. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the concision, for we are the circumcision of the works of God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Sound like he Amen. said just what Jesus Amen. said in John 6, 63. No confidence in the flesh. But uh, Elder, with this guy, Elder Michael Johnson, he's got all the confidence in the flesh he needs. He just looks at the color of a person's skin, mm -hmm. and he already knows that you don't belong to God because mm -hmm. he has confidence in the flesh, which Paul said he has no confidence in. He says, though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man think that he aware of, he might trust in the flesh. Paul says, I more. So guess what, Michael Johnson? If anybody could brag and can prove something, it would have been Paul. But Paul says, I don't do that. He says, I, I can trust in the flesh. If you think you can, Paul said, I more. But notice what he considered. he Because he was circumcised the eighth day. He was of the stock of Israel. He was of the tribe of Benjamin. A Hebrew of the Hebrew, what you claim to be. Now, he should be your leader. Is Paul your leader? Is Paul your leader? Do you hold that Paul was an apostle of Jesus Christ? Do you believe that Paul is what you claim you are? He was a Hebrew of Hebrews. As touching the law, a Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness in the law, blameless. Now look at this. But what things will gain to me, those I counted lost for Christ. 
yea, doubtless. And I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dumb, that I might win Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness. See, that's a real problem, uh, Johnson, and those who follow him. I-S-U-P-K, you guys that stand on the street corner, you're purple. Re on the corners and, and interrogate and, and make fun and belittle other ethnicity group, in particular our Caucasian uh, human beings that's created in the image of God. You better repent. I'm going to just tell you that. You better repent out there disrespecting people that's created in the image of God by your own righteousness, which he says is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, verse 9, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I might know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Now, to all of you listening to this program, let me just say this. I'm going to toss it. I don't care what ethnicity. God doesn't care what ethnicity you are. If you realize that you sin, you fall in short of the glory of God, just know, I don't care how you even got into this world. Maybe you was brought in this world illegitimately. Maybe your parents weren't married. Maybe you don't know who your mom is, and maybe you don't know who your dad is. But I want you to know something. You sin, there's a God in heaven that loves you. Amen. And he's not judging you on the base of your skin. He's judging all of us on the base of our heart. And when you understand that you're a sinner, you sin, you've fallen short of the glory of God, as we all have. If you obey the gospel of Jesus Christ, you can be saved. By hearing, believing, repenting, confessing, getting baptized by a male member of the church, Jesus, who is alive, sitting on the right hand of his Father, will baptize you as his Spirit, and he'll add you, Acts 2.47, to the body of Christ, the church of Christ you can read about in the Bible. Get yourself as far away as you can from these so-called Hebrew groups who are nothing but a bunch of racists, and if they don't fix it, on the day of judgment, they will hear Jesus say, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. 281-837-2222. At this time, I'm going to talk to the Brother Stephen Ozan. Go ahead, brother. Thank you, Henry. Thank, Thank you, you Javier. Brother. Man, I'm so excited about this session. Man, I'm just sitting here, man, emotional. Thank God that these men of God have spoken the truth. I just want to share one thing that Mr. Michael Johnson did. I talked to him personally on the phone. Uh, I offered him Christian love to talk to him privately about the subject. He chose to criticize me, saying I must be afraid to talk publicly. And so once I saw he spurned the love of the saint, there was nothing needed else to say. Because I'm going to show you his ignorance level and why I wanted to talk to him privately. Now that when he went publicly, I'm going to show you and your followers, Michael, they're ignorant for following you. Man. Now on our caption on our website, we have the explanation of how the church began around seven, around 33 A.D. in that vicinity. And we point out Acts chapter 2 shows how it begins. Now, we, found, we, we, we read this portion. Uh, you can read it yourselves. Acts chapter 2, verse 37, 36. That all the house of Israel know surely that God had made that same Jesus and be crucified, both Lord and Christ. This is the first time the gospel is preached. It's around 33 A.D. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children, and to all that are fall, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and saw, saying what? Listen to this. This is to the Jewish nation and the world. Save yourselves, which means their laws, from this unto all which is perverted generation. Then they that glad to receive it were baptized, and the same day, listen to this audience, they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. These 3,000 souls are added to what number? The 120 believers that you will find gathered together to discuss and wait for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ's kingdom which is on that day it came. There's 120 believers and 3,000 has been added unto them. You'll find the number 120 in Acts chapter 1 and verse number 15. I'm going to read that one for you in case Michael tries to lie on that one. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples, Acts 1 15, and said the number of names together were about 120. So this is the them that the 3,000 are added unto. Now, what do they continue in? Something that none of the Hebrews, none of the scholars seem to want to follow, 
And they continue steadfastly, Acts 2.42, in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship. What is fellowship? 1 John chapter 1, verses 1 through 10, which is to walk in the light as Christ is in light. Michael doesn't walk in the light, so therefore he has no fellowship with the saints. And many of you listening who are in the church of Christ have ceased to walk in the light. And that's why you're out of fellowship, staying at home watching church on TV. A guy like Michael would eat your lunch. And so, and in breaking of bread and in prayer. So, Acts 2.47 praising God and having faith with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily, such as should be said. Why is this spoken of as the church? Because there's only one. Now I want to read for you 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Michael misunderstanding and being unlearned and ignorant of the ways of Christ because he's a racist. Think that we are akinning ourselves to 1 Corinthians 10 and one, he's thinking that we got the doctrine our own answer wrong. Uh, Carl, I'm going to have to ask you to wait. We'll have to catch you next week because i got to finish this. 1 Corinthians 10 and 1. Moreover, brethren, now this is where Michael goes and say that we got our own date wrong. We are not this church. This is our forefathers who came out of Egypt unto Moses. Look what it says. Look at the level of ignorance of this man. 1 Corinthians 10 and 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant, which he is. How that all our fathers were under the call and all passed through the sea. He's talking to the Christian and the Jews who have become Christian because we have an inheritance from those fathers of belief and ours on the Christianity. Amen. And we're all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink for they drank of that spiritual rock. Now guess who the rock is that followed them and that rock was Christ. That's not our beginning. That's their beginning. So he assumed and he made a fool of himself on his own broadcast that we think this is our beginning. You know what? If he'd had a private conversation with me, Amen. you wouldn't be hearing his name now. Amen. Let me show something with you. When you throw a rock at the house of a saint, we don't have glass windows. You understand? Amen. We are in the rock, Christ, and we will come back at you with nothing but red scriptures in love. Exposing your ignorance level is so high. We want to pray for you Man. and all who follow you. Now, do you see how easy it was to show that he was wrong? Why didn't he want to talk privately? You know why? Because Michael wants a following. Mm -hmm. He spent a lot of money and time studying from other ignorant men, and he wants to follow him. But we were not going to give him so much a space of an hour to lie on the gospel. You'll find that in Galatians chapter 2. Amen. So we want to leave the faithful saints of God with Romans 16, 16, the churches of Christ salute you. He's assuming when the church began. Can I get it here? Uh, yeah. Because he doesn't believe in the Christian dispensation of time. And so that's the problem. And by him not believing in a Christian dispensation of time, he rejects Christ because men like Michelangelo and others have painted pictures of which we have no connection to. Hello. Catholicism and many of you denominational churches have created pictures of a fair-skinned, blue-eyed, possibly green-eyed, very long hair image of a man you call Jesus. We're not akin to that either, nor are we akin to the Afro-wang, fist-pumping, black Jesus. We're akin to the Christ who we know no longer after the flesh, who he has said himself there's no value in the flesh. And as Brother Frias has pointed out, you've, you, you're so lost with these men. That is a woman in the Song of Solomon. Amen. And, that's, and that's what happens to you. But we're telling you, audience, we love you and we're warning you, flee these men and listen to the Bible and decide for yourself. We have no following. We seek no following. Amen. People will listen to us that are following. They're following because they're listening to the scriptures. We do not receive glory from them. We do not ask them for any support. The Lord has allowed us to receive all that we will need by his power. He's supporting us from heaven. But you have to understand is, as Henry and Javier have taught, you know, the first sign of racism is to talk about skin color. And as they point out, no matter what 
color your skin is, you are a racist when you judge the skin of a man, the texture of his hair, the contents in his pocket, the region he lives in, who he's married to, and all the things, providing he is married to a woman, if he is a he, yeah. you judge those things, and so therefore you condemn yourself. Your soul is cursed into hell, and you will die lost because inside of the flesh is a spirit that has no skin tone. Amen. Amen. Good teaching, brothers. Man. God is good, Lord. man. If I tell you, man, God, you man, I brought you brothers. Oh, I love y'all, man. I see, this is who I want to be with. Men like y'all, man. God bless you, man. This is how you go to heaven, man. 